We welcome you back to the Sports Mix. It's a great day to be alive. It's Wyatt Wednesday here. Shepard coming off of a good win over Millersville. Nick Versley, Kyle McLaughlin now joined by Shepard offensive lineman Wyatt Pelicano. Wyatt, how are you doing today? Oh, my goodness. If I was any better, I would be twins. Let me tell you. I mean, it's Wednesday. It is game week in Shepardstown yet again. I mean, what more is there to be excited about? If that's not enough to excite you, I think you might need to go get checked out by the doctor or something because something's not right. It's homecoming week, too. So, a lot of excitement. Yeah, of course. How could I forget? Silly me. Look (laughs) at that. Homecoming week at the crib. Let's go. Yeah, everybody, you got a lot of people. Actually, yeah, I knew that already. We got we got some dudes, some alumni coming back that I know about that have already reached out. So, yeah, we're, we're all excited for that. Not just football alumni either. Brenton Doyle's going to be in attendance, so that should be exciting. The member of the Colorado Rockies, uh, he's having a meet and greet, so that will be cool. But, um, Wyatt, let's talk about the Millersville game before we get into this week. Uh, great performance, it seemed like, for you guys, considering at halftime – you know, things were tight. It was 3-3. Three to three. You guys weren't really moving the ball. Um, but you got that field goal right before half, and then momentum really shifted, and Coach McCook talked about it. You know, you guys were able to score in all three phases, and any time that happens, uh, it's going to be very tough to beat a team. And, and obviously, I think you come away with it feeling really good, especially about that second half. Yeah, I mean, we feel amazing about it. Um, like you guys said, I mean, in Coach McCook's words, too, like, I mean, trust me, we heard him as well. You know, anytime you can, you can be productive on the scoreboard in all three phases, yeah, that makes you a very difficult team to beat. So that certainly helped. I think another huge factor for us is uh, no turnovers. We did not put the ball on the ground or lose it in the air once um, for us. So we won the turnover battle, which is always, again, that's going to make you a very difficult team to beat when you're winning turnover battles. Um, so that was extremely important. And in the rain makes it even more important. And we learned that, obviously, at Kutztown. Um, and I think that that showed that we're, we definitely put the work in to, to be better in, in, in tough weather conditions. Um, so I, I thought that that was a phenomenal team win. Uh, everybody was excited about it. We, we got to, I think we made progress in the run game. I think we made progress as an offense. I think we made progress as a team. So that's always, that's always a good win. That's what I was about to get into, Wyatt. Not only progress in the run game as the running backs combined for over 150 net yards, but also the offensive line only allowing two sacks this week. Just talk about the progression there, too. Uh, yeah, obviously, I said last week, you know, that is a stat line that we take. The, the Both of those are stat lines, though, that we, we own as a unit, you know, because as an O-line, we don't, we don't have a stat column, so we take pride in those, even though they're not always totally in our control. Uh, that's something that we take a lot of pride in as a unit. And uh, it was definitely exciting to come in on Sunday and see on the board uh, that we reached our goal for our rushing yards, uh, which is something that we have, we've have we done rarely this season because obviously the sacks will take off of the rushing yards. And we were, we were able to keep it just a two. That's still not the number we want. The goal is zero. That is, that is the standard here at Shepard, and uh, that's something that we are going to keep getting better at. So we, we aren't really uh, excited with that number. Um, it is improvement from last week, but we still, it's not the standard. And the standard is the standard that's not changing. So we have to keep working to get better there. Um, but as far we were most definitely uh, excited about the progress we made in the run game. And you mentioned the running game and, and with it being the best rushing performance of the season for your team, when you look at the total net yards, um, I guess that, I mean, that, shows I think it seems like you guys are starting to get that identity in the run game back uh, that maybe was missing at the beginning of the season not that you were having bad games on the ground but to have that breakthrough game and and get both running backs really looking good um, that's got to be exciting for the offensive line because we know offensive linemen they love to run the football yeah absolutely you know there's not I don't think there's a person well I mean I don't want to. I don't want to say that because I know Coach McCook will always say that there's not a person on the field that wants to run the ball successfully more than him, and I believe it. But uh, running the ball is tough as a concept. You know, what I mean, like when you look at it, it is a lot easier to get chunks of yards in the air. It, I mean, it comes with a risk, but running the ball is always like it's tough. You got to have all five linemen in sync. If you got tight ends and fullbacks, they got to be in sync with the O line, and then the running back has to sync up with them. So it's a lot of collaboration, but when you can, when you can, when it clicks and we can do it effectively, which we did last week, 
I mean, it is beautiful and things will open up. And I think we are really, like, our backfield is really starting to uh, click and get in stride as well. I mean, we're looking like we're looking like the old Giants back in the day. We got a Ma Bradshaw and Brandon Jacobs in there prime back there. Uh, those dudes are, are doing the job that they're supposed to do. Uh, we did the job that we were supposed to do, and, it, and it, uh, it resulted in abundant success, which is what we wanted. Wyatt, what was maybe said or what changed mentally in the locker room at halftime to give you guys the boost as a slow start in the first half compared to a tremendous second half? Um, I don't know if it was so much a speech. As, I mean, I've, I've said to uh, to the guys, and I know that, that they believe it too, uh, that I, there's really, I don't think there's a team in D2 that can beat our offense when we're clicking, right? And that that's all it is. So we went into halftime, and the coaches made the adjustments that they needed to make. Uh, that's all stuff that's way above my pay grade. You know, that's why they get paid to, to be here. Uh, and, and do what they do, you know. So they they made the schematic changes they need to, but it wasn't it, there. There wasn't a big movie speech, you know. There wasn't it was it, it doesn't take that sometimes. Sometimes it's just the adjustments were made that needed to be adjusted. The energy was the same, but when you start to get the the good results, right, that we weren't finding in the first half, well, the energy will naturally go up with that. And to me, there's nothing that can energize a team more than when you just physically dominate the run game. You know, when you have when you have those the big dogs come off the field and they're fired up, and we were most definitely fired up after that drive where we ran it down the whole field and scored on the run, right? I mean that 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 brings juice to the whole team. They love seeing that because that's that's a lot of big dudes and a lot of big energy coming from coming from the position group. So I think that that was a help. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I think the coaches did their job. You know, they went in a half, watched, and they were keeping a watch fly over the whole first half. They knew what to switch. They made the right switches that we needed and uh, put us in the best position we could be in to make the plays we needed to make. Why let's talk a little bit about Westchester, a team that has been one of the better programs in the PSAC during their history, and uh, they have typically a, a pretty good defense. What are you seeing from them this year? Yeah, uh, they're a solid defense. You know, they got they got some dudes. Uh, they got some dudes in the backfield that can that can really fly around. That could definitely cause problems for us uh, up front. Um, they're they're very good at hiding pressures. Uh, they they do a good job of bringing different people different places. They're very versatile. Uh, they have multiple fronts that they're that they're comfortable in. You know, so that's a challenge. They're comfortable with a four three and and down in the odd stack type deal three three. Uh, which those are two. Those are two. They can they can definitely cause challenges for us. So uh, we're going to be on our P's and Q's, and I, I know that um, we we're going to be locked in and ready to go and handle whatever they give us. What's the scheme or the plan for this week? Uh, yeah, I don't really. You know, again, that's kind of above my pay grade for the most part. But I know that uh, I know that if if we do what we're coached to do and supposed to do. Uh, we will definitely find the success we had. For us, I mean, Shepherd football is going to play Shepherd football. You know, a lot of it doesn't change. We're we're extremely balanced right now. So uh, with our running pass, which is which is a very good thing. So the game plan is is kind of the same. You know, like I said before, the standard is the standard. We're going to go out there and run our playbook and uh, and try to have as much success as we can doing the things that we know how to do. Because even though they are versatile in their fronts. They're both fronts that we've seen before and we should be able to handle business in. So uh, that's, I think the game plan is just to execute what we need to execute. All right, good thing. It looks like the weather is, is going more toward not being rainy like it was originally supposed to be on Saturday, so that will be good. But also, homecoming, like we mentioned, um, does, I mean, obviously, you guys are fired up for every game and every home game at Ram Stadium is usually a pretty good atmosphere but does homecoming add any extra uh fire to the fuel or fuel of the fire i should say yeah yeah i think it does um you know that's one of those things homecoming is it's what makes it it's it's the reminder that we're playing college ball you know i mean it's a reminder that we're we're still playing this game at an amateur scholastic level you know and 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 it's something to take pride in the school you know i mean It, it changes the energy from this is for the team uh, to this is for this is for the whole brand. You know, this is for us as a as a as a more than just a football program, but as a school. Um, so that's something that I think maybe could give you a little extra juice. Uh, but like you said, man, we we really do try to approach everything the same. Uh, we're we're respecting these dudes just as much as we would respect uh, any of the teams that we we could potentially see. You know, so we're gonna prepare. We're gonna prepare to win. 
because that's that's what we do. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think there is maybe a little bit. There's a little bit more juice because you obviously it's it's like a it's a it's a protect this house type of mentality. You know, you don't you don't lose on homecoming. We got to hold it down for the alumni coming back and show everybody that Shepherd football is still Shepherd football and represent for the whole school. Wyatt, I want to circle back to something that you mentioned earlier, and that was all the different goals that you guys put up on the board on a weekly basis. What are the goals that you guys have up there, all of them, uh, so far for this week? Uh, well, the goals don't really change, you know. So the goals are, are like I said, like that's kind of how we operate. You know, the standard is the standard for us. Uh, that That is like the, the bar is the bar. Um, they don't change depending on who we're playing. We want to be able to dominate in all phases of offense, defense, and special teams uh, to the same degree every week. You know, so uh, the goals go across the board for us. It's as an offense, um, and, it, and it handles all, all positions, you know, quarterbacks, 2 O line, everybody. You know, and it keeps us accountable and shows us. It, it's, a, it's a nice, honest look in the mirror because the numbers will never lie to you and they'll tell you exactly how you're doing. Uh, and that's why it, may, it means a lot to us as an O line when we do finally get to when we when we reach those goals, you know, because uh, we don't have a lot of stats to take pride in, and that gives us a sense of a sense of responsibility to make sure that we reach those goals. Why you mentioned uh, when we started the interview about uh, some guys you knew were coming back uh, for this homecoming game? Is there anybody that maybe you played with that you're looking forward to seeing uh, after the game on Saturday? Yeah, absolutely. I'm. Uh, I'm actually was just talking to my man Jack Baxter. He said Kyle Smith is going to be there, and uh, I'm actually so excited to see Kyle because he's been he's been uh, traveling the world a little bit. He's been going on a he's been pretty much on an adventure. He's been backpacking through Europe. He's been away from his phone and everything. So I'm excited. I'm sure he's got some crazy stories to tell. And then uh, that's just the one off the top of my head. But I'm sure that there will be many many others. And it's always good to see everybody coming back. Wyatt, I want to ask if you got the opportunity to watch an alum in Tyson Bajan as he took the field uh, last week against Minnesota or not. Yeah, so I, I only got to watch the replay, unfortunately, because, you know, we keep a pretty busy schedule on Sundays We because uh, our, our day off of care activities is Mondays, so we got to stay busy on the days that we're allowed to. Um, so we were actually in meetings the whole time, and Coach Klein had yelled out in our team meeting that Tyson was in. Uh, we had some dudes that were tracking his stats, and then we, I did get to see the replays after after we were done for the day. And uh, I mean, yeah, he held it down. You know, he did he did what we thought he was uh, gonna do. You know, he I think he played uh, a pretty solid game. I know he owns that interception more than anything because I mean, obviously that's that's who he is. You know, so that that he's gonna he's gonna show up and work, and, and I think he's gonna lead the Bears to a win this week. That is my prediction, and it's not even a prediction. I I know it's gonna be true. So you can you can mark my words on that. Tyson Bajan is going to deliver a victory this week. <clears throat> yeah, you mentioned there's a great chance that he's going to start this week with the uh, injury to Justin Fields. So I know, like you said, you know Sunday's a day that you guys are practicing, you're working. Uh, but is there any plan to watch the game uh, as a team if Tyson is starting and playing? Um, I haven't heard anything of the such. I would absolutely love that. Um, but obviously that's not up to us. That's a, that, there's only one guy that's in charge of all that type of stuff, and that's, that's the head man himself. So uh, if, he, if he was down for something like that, I'm sure all the dudes would definitely be excited and, and, and uh, to, happy to do it. But we still have uh, preparation and stuff that we're going to have to do for our next week. So it'll be up to him. But, man, that would be really, really, really cool. Why we uh, talked about last week some off the field things, and you talked about like roommates and how obviously football players room with football players. Uh, who's your roommate? Uh, so I actually have two roommates. Um, I live with Malachi Brown, and then uh, a non football player, which is ironic because obviously the conversation we had last week. But it is uh, close to uh, a guy that's definitely close to the program, Tanner Lucas, Ty's twin brother. Is there anything you can tell us about Malachi that we wouldn't know just from talking to him about football? Mm, uh, I don't know. I feel like he's a pretty open book. You know, he uh, you can kind of you get what you get what you see with him. You know, or what you see is what you get. He's not really he's not really hiding any personality traits or anything. He's he's a he's pretty open about the type of person he is. 
So I don't know if there's anything that he's necessary that I, I would know that other people wouldn't. You know, he uh, he is as advertised. He he is everything that he claims to be. So <clears throat> I don't think so.